Welcome to Salam Nerds Podcast. We do reviews and recaps of nerd culture, reality TV, and current events from this week. Yo, 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 it's the Salam Nerds. My name is Dean, a.k.a. Watson Dean. I'm here, my boy, Chad. We drop live episodes on YouTube on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. All episodes can also be found everywhere podcasts are found. Thank you to all our supporters. Please help us by subscribing and leaving a good review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yo, 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 salam, nerds. It's your boy, Neebs, a.k.a. Watch with Neebs, and I am here with my co-host, finally, after a long hiatus. Welcome back, Jazz. <laughs> no nicknames today, just Jazz. No we, nicknames. Miss <laughs> we miss you too much, man. It's glad to have you back on the show. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, man. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a rough couple of weeks, man. Yeah, <laughs> that understatement of the year. <laughs> yeah, uh, not for just for us, but f for America. <laughs> for every, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, the internet has been falling apart this week. So we did an episode on, I believe, Tuesday. It was a wrestling episode. And while we were doing it, we we're like, you know what? There's a good chance a former WWE wrestler will be president of the United States by the end of this interview. <laughs> And oh my that's god! What happened? <laughs> did you manifest it? No, I did not. Don't put that shit on me, bro. Don't <laughs> put that shit on me. I did not manifest it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's what happened, man. Uh, we it happened. Yeah. We we have a Trump presidency, and um, we've we've done an episode. Uh, we don't do too many episodes on on politics unless it like actually, you know, I would say is relevant and i feel like in this situation it kind of is i feel like there's there's so much stuff going on right now i know you did an entire episode on the dnc when yeah, you went to their um conference and a lot of stuff happened there and you gave us a lot of detail and information and speculations and what you thought was going to happen and you know a lot I of it came true, unfortunately. A lot of it came true. Some of it didn't. Some of it did. But like, it has been crazy. And like, I feel like I was definitely a, one of the people that was disillusioned. And you know, I, I I was really just like tapped out. I was like, I just, I just there's no winning here. Uh, but talking to you, talking to Suara, I was like reluctant like i gotta do something i can't let this happen right so as much as i you know wanted to vote third party i was like i have to still find a way to make a difference so what i did was i found friend uh in his, in his swing state and i was like we were both talking about how we both definitely wanted to to do uh you know swing states and i was just like i don't know if i should but it doesn't matter i'm in new jersey and then I was like, you know what? I heard about this thing where you can just swap votes with somebody in the swing state. Why don't you just vote for Kamala and I'll vote for Jill Stein? That way, you know, we can get the numbers up a little bit. It could be a protest vote, but we don't put the country in danger. Um, so we tried that. Um, it still made no difference. But I just want to say you were the inspiration to, to do that because I was really like at the point where I'm like, Burn it down. <laughs> I remember you were the burn it down kind of in the uh, vibe. Yeah. My, and my, guess my, what? You yeah. manifested that too. <laughs> Listen, most people are like their politics are left and right or in the middle. Mine's like blood splatter <laughs> across the freaking thing. It's like a Jackson Pollock, right? So, like, for me, <laughs> uh, I'm always like, I don't know. If, it's it's hard for me to find like just one person that I would really really agree with, but like in the grand scheme of things, it came down to what would do the least amount of harm to the most amount of people, and it was frustrating because I didn't want to do it, but it felt like I had to, and the discourse online is insane. Like 
TikTok, liberal TikTok is in shambles. People are like, I'm going to Starbucks. I'm going to McDonald's now. Like, it's just so Fantastic. crazy. Yeah, right. It's so crazy. It, it, the discourse veil comes off. Like, mask the veil comes, off. The veil comes <laughs> off a little bit, right? And like, I can't wait. I can't wait till Trump deports you Latinos. I can't wait till he turns Gaza into a, a parking lot. And I'm like, wait, you guys were <laughs> like the liberals. You guys were the allies. Like, what happened here? Surprise. That was that was jarring when I when I started hearing that stuff. Um, and it's and it's weird. And like people also came out and said stuff like, "Did you really expect like Muslims to vote for a woman?" Which like is a bullshit thing to say because 78 percent of muslims voted for hillary clinton uh we got even this year alone we voted for two muslim women <laughs> who actually won their races and it was the first muslim um actually four i think four sure uh and then you know the first muslim woman to be a head of state or prime minister was a quarter of a century ago and america still hasn't done it now and there's been 13 since then so like how are these people talking down to us right so it's kind of weird and like there's a lot of like like i don't know negative feedback and retaliation towards muslims that i don't think is valid or justified especially when you look at how badly <laughs> <laughs> they were <laughs> there's it's like if it was like just michigan and that was the sinker and you're like okay maybe that's on us <laughs> but like it wasn't it was it was, it was not even close dead. it was not even close um but you know jazz you're a lot more plugged in than me i try to keep my knowledge very like what the average person would think i don't like like mm -hmm. i don't like to go too deep into it because i know when talking to you it gives you a good idea of what the people who are not plugged in how they think and what, yeah. what's their train of thought because you're too deep in you're plugged in so oh, like you're, sure. too, highly you're, biased. You're, you're too close to see and sometimes like i don't like to be that plugged in because you know i like to think of myself like a, a, the average joe like you know being frustrated mm -hmm. and disillusioned if you can get to me then you can get to the average joe there's nothing that i saw on television on the internet that was able to get to me other than you being a close friend of mine and sitting me down and Swara talking about, you know, Hey, accelerationism is a privileged point to have. And I'm just like, you're right. You know, that makes sense. There's too many people being put at risk to be like, burn the whole thing down. Um, right. But if people don't have friends like you, like then they're going to vote like how we see, how we've seen it's, 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 it's very, clear what happened um so i'm very curious to to hear about what your thoughts are because i've definitely been listening to a few podcasts trying to figure out like what went wrong and muslims in gaza doesn't even break the top 10 of the things that like affected this so it's crazy to me uh i don't know jazz why don't why don't you let us know what you think okay i i wouldn't say Muslims in Gaza didn't affect it. Okay, you know what? You're right. Because I think I worded that wrongly. But I think like the talking points that people are having when they're doing a post mortem, Gaza is not coming up. No. Maybe that's a better way to put it. And I don't know if that's intentional or not. Could be intentional. Um, yeah. It could be. Yeah. But the reality is, um, I'm I've been looking at the numbers at least in Texas where I have statewide data. Yeah. And today when I looked at it. I looked at, you know, who voted in 2020 and who didn't vote in 2024, right? Mm -hmm. Like how many people voted in 2020 and not this year? That number is 2 million. 2.1 million. So 2 million people less voted this year. Yeah. In Texas. Yeah. Just in Texas Just in alone. Texas. Yeah. Damn. And then I looked at their partisan lean. 10% uh, Republican. Mm-hmm. 38% were independent mm. and 52% were democratic. Damn. That's a big amount of Democrats that did not show up. Yeah. But like, could you really blame them? Like, what were we getting behind? Like the only Correct. thing that we were being told is that we have to stop Trump. That's it. That's the only yeah. thing. And then this guy goes on Joe Rogan 
and talks about his policies and stuff for three hours and it humanizes him. And at that point, people are like, he's not so scary. And then they either don't go and vote or they vote for him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the biggest flaw with the Democratic Party is we're so bad at messaging. Yeah. Um, and then the message you try to put out just wasn't coherent also um i don't know if i told you how involved i was in making sure tim walt was our vp pick right Mm -hmm. but i did do a lot of work for that um some of the hit pieces out there about him on school vouchers you know i'm quoted in them Mm -hmm. and then the new york times called me and my friends a motley crew of left-wing radicals (laughs) that sunk josh shapiro um but you know I wanted Tim Waltz because he's an attack dog. He's really smart and he's the fun, likable grandpa type. Yeah. And we saw that in the beginning when he first came out. Sure. But then all of October, uh, even like halfway through September, we didn't hear a lot about him. No, we, we didn't hear anything about him. The only thing I saw him do was go on a, uh, TikTok live and discuss what did he discuss? He was discussing something. Uh, You're talking about the white guy tacos one, or yeah, something like that. Like he did like a few fun TikToks, and that was it. Yeah, and then they neutered. Oh him. no, the the DNC joke, the the one about the Puerto Rican. He did a TikTok live discussing that, and it was just he was just dissecting the Puerto Rican joke. That's what I. That's that's the, the only time I've seen him all of October. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What we have all come to realize is that, and we've all known it too, is that the people who run the campaigns at the top, it's like the same 16 people that have been there for 20 years. Mm. And they're just not going to learn. No. Um, Tim Waltz being there, like, I was really hoping he'd move Kamala to the left a bit. I was really hoping that they would use the, you know, the old grandpa who didn't get red pilled. You know, mm-hmm. he has like a healthy masculinity to him and we can bring people back. Yeah. Uh, but no. Instead, the consultants up there decided, let's talk about democracy, which is such an abstract concept. Yeah. And let's talk about abortion, which is very important. And we should be fighting for abortion rights everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then let's talk about shit those are the only two things i really heard <laughs> just <not> yeah <laughs> exactly right and when it comes to the vp picks i've heard people uh especially centrists who are like hey i noticed that the democrats always pick a vp that appears dumber than them and they or docile than them or you know less involved than them and then republicans always pick a vp who is smarter than them right so you look at george washington yeah. george bush you think dick cheney you know mm-hmm. and, and and he won you think of trump the first time and you got pence you know like someone who you would think like oh this you know maybe not be a good person but they're they come off intelligent or they come out like hey if something to happen they could actually take the reins whereas like you know democrats they'll have somebody who is like Exactly. Like they have, you have Barack Obama, then you have Joe Biden, like the grandpa, right? Mm-hmm. Someone you don't think is going to happen. Then you had Joe Biden, you had Kamala, and Kamala Lee didn't do anything, right? At we at that point when she was doing going for VP, someone who was like harmless is what they go for almost. Yeah. And uh, I, harmless uh, would have been Josh Shapiro. Harmless would have been uh, Cooper from North Carolina. Mm. Walt was supposed to be an attack dog, but. They really neutered him, and that's one of the biggest disappointments for me. Because mm. he, when he was calling Republicans weird, and you know, when someone asked him, you know, what do you think of this policy? He's like, you know what I think? Mind your own damn business. I was like, mm-hmm. that's such a good line. Like, mm-hmm. this is something that can resonate with a lot of people. Just mind your business, and yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, I, yeah, like right mid September, they just said no, no more talking from Tim Walz. I'm like, what is going on? That's so weird. Um, yeah, the, really, the consultants, they just overestimated things. Mm. And it did not play out the way they thought it would. What are your thoughts about the idea that this manosphere 
of like blogs and podcasts and you know these things happen to get Trump over the finish line at the end with male voters. What are your thoughts about that? Because I like mean, Joe Rogan, because the Joe Rogan podcast and the Flagrant podcast, uh, I have not listened to them, but they're being credited a lot with like you know resonating with a certain audience. And you had Kamala go on Call Me Daddy, right? And <laughs> when you they call me daddy or call her daddy, I don't know the name. I don't like, know. Either. It's one of those podcasts, right? Uh, but the way I see it is that. The Republicans are marketing their candidate as someone who's you would think is a villain, but is actually an anti-hero. So like he has this image of a villain and then mm -hmm. they humanize him into like an anti-hero. He, like, he's just misunderstood, but he's actually doing what like the people want him to do. And he's going to drain the swamp and he's going to do all this stuff. Probably not true, but that's how they're marketing them. The right. Democrats, she goes on Call Me Daddy and it comes off like very superior very like yes. we're the moral authority we know what's best for you so mm -hmm. like when i was talking to somebody i was like you know i was explaining to it in comic book terms and like she was a harry potter fan so i was like all right think of it this way kamala was coming off as umbrage and then they were trying to pass off trump as snape and she's like oh that is kind of what happened <laughs> and that's the that's the marketing that like we see and like people resonate with that these days because yeah. all our superhero movies are anti-heroes right the deadpools the wolverines like mm -hmm. that's what they all are and no one wants to be talked down to and saying hey we know what's best for you and then also not mention anything about economy not anything about the working class not how they're going to pay for how they're going to pay for eggs how their house prices are going insane new jersey has the closest race it's ever had. It lost by 6%. It's, just, it's usually in double digits. And it's because we can't live here anymore. The prices are too high. Oh, yeah. And people mm -hmm. don't know. People, The average person doesn't know how. They just know that whatever is happening now can't keep happening. Right? Yeah. They don't know what, who's responsible. They don't know if it's the president. They don't know if it's Congress. They don't know if it's the FTC. They don't know what's happening. They don't know who's it's doing the Fed, it. But okay. <laughs> right? right. But but the average Joe doesn't know that, right? Correct. And yeah. and if that's the case, then they should have had messaging that gets that across. Right. If the yeah. economy is doing good, send us that message. Make us believe that the economy is doing good when everything is inflating and we can't afford anything, right? And I think that is yeah. that is a problem. I absolutely hate the way national pundits talk about the economy. <laughs> well, uh, well, we, I don't know, like, like, how should they talk about it? Here's the thing. They talk about the economy and the usual metric they have is interest rates and stock market. Sure. The vast majority of Americans do not own stocks right now. That is true. So when the metrics are oh, interest rates are getting lower. The consumer price index is now lower year over year, quarter over quarter. And then the stock market is an all-time high. Mm. That doesn't mean shit to most people, man. Like, it doesn't. It doesn't, right. And so all this messaging that even I saw like from Kamala surrogates here, like the economy is at an all-time high. And I'm like, I am still struggling like, with my day-to-day -day yeah. bills. What are you talking about? Like, yeah. The average person does not benefit from this. And comma surrogates are usually like, you know, the rich people. Um, this specific person's a housewife of someone very rich. And, you know, she gets to just post on Facebook all day. That's what she does. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it's it's gotten so expensive that people can't even die. Because, like, it's expensive to people. die. It's expensive it's like 10, to... 10000 now. <laughs> and people people are people are frustrated it's, it's difficult um i don't know and and i think the messaging needs to be like hey we're fixing this and this is our plan or hey this is not our doing it's difficult i don't know it's it's difficult to see what's going out there like i have people who are muslims who never voted republican ever in their life saying we should be Republican. <laughs> it's like that Rami thing. He's like, you know what? Now that I think about it, we're more like them than we are like they. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so like, I was like, no, don't go over to the dark side. It's not right. But can you blame people 
for looking out for themselves first. It's like when you're in a plane crash, you put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on other people. And that's the way people are looking at it. People just do not understand a lot of things. Um, what I will say though, like Donald Trump had some really good lines that actually resonate with a lot of people. Like when he said no tax or uh, on a tips, Tip. right? Yeah phenomenal like that is something the average person would resonate with like that's exactly like it's so easy to understand that he was like tips right no tax and then and, and it works for both sides like the people who work in these industries and they get like tips they're like oh great i get to take more home and then people right. who give tips they're all like yes these people get to take more home like the average person wants their fellow man to be okay but they don't mm -hmm. want to give money to their fellow man and have a percentage of it be taken out and given to the government and be used to fund wars. Because yeah. every time and I pay tax, the first thing I think of, like, what's the majority of my tax going to? It's going to war. This makes me want to pay as less tax as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's another big thing is the war. Democrats did not handle that at all. In fact... I would kick out of the DNC for wearing a kafia on third night. <laughs> yeah, I know. You told me. That's like, we talked about that in the DNC episode. Like, people just did not want to talk about it. And, like, yeah, we organized 300 ceasefire delegates. But, like, <laughs> when you're up against 4,000, it really doesn't do much. <laughs> it, it really doesn't. And the thing is, like, I understand why the Muslim community was, was so hurt for that, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't agree with the voting for trump and I also i really really can't stand the people that are celebrating because there's nothing to celebrate we didn't win anything yeah no, you, you we stuck did not. It, yeah you stuck it to, to uh kamala but like you didn't win anything you're still at go you haven't even passed the starting point right and like i've seen right. people like make tiktoks and stuff about it and i was like you're an idiot because you, we haven't won anything we haven't done anything but like i also understand from their point of view is that as Muslims, and not even just Muslims, just the people who were begging and pleading for some type of, I, yeah, you especially, like, give us something. Give us something that we can take back to our communities and say, hey, vote for Kamala Harris because A and B and C, right? Give yeah. us something. We got nothing. Instead, they looked at our faces, laughed, and said $14 billion to Israel. And, yes, and then the only thing that we have, the only card that we have to play is our vote. So, And they're like, well, they're not going to do it. They called our bluff. And we, we, didn't, we either did not vote for Kamala Harris, we voted third party, or we did not vote in general, or some people voted for Trump. Although it's not a big number. It's like 9%. Of like Muslims that voted for Trump, like that's not huge, right? No, most Muslims actually voted for Kamala Harris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a, a majority of them voted it was for like Kamala 60 Harris. Some odd percent, yeah. And then the rest was third party, and yeah. really, like nine percent is like being super loud and stuff like that and celebrating. And I, I, I don't agree with that. Um, but I also understand why people are frustrated. Like, what are like we tried everything, and they ignored us. And you know what they say, man, like they chose violence because violence is the voice of the unheard. It's what they say. Yeah. Um, so that's how I view what's really happening here. The thing is, I don't know if we tried everything. Well, like me, as they average... tried everything that they saw on TikTok or online, right? Sure. Yeah. Because people like to believe, you know, voting and all this will send a less uh, message yeah um <laughs> i guarantee you voting behaviors like this do not send a message As so, but then, then, it's just, then it's just a vicious, vicious circle like they're just going to anoint someone again next year and shove them down our throats because they didn't learn it with hillary when yep. that happened and we 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 wanted bernie it would feel the burn he had all the momentum they shoved hillary down our throats and then this time around we knew that Biden was a transitional president. He was going to be here for one year. And he, was he was supposed going to, leave. to be. He was supposed to be a transitional yeah. right? For one term. They were going to do primaries, find somebody we like, and then we would go. But no, we did not have any choice in picking Kamala. Instead, they just played identity politics, which the Republicans love to play that card. And Joe Biden, one of the dumbest things he ever said was that I'm going to pick a black woman as my VP without naming who she is and then it, it presented her as a DEI candidate 
And no matter yeah. how qualified she was, no matter all how amazing she was or whatever she did, no one was going to look at her other than a DEI candidate because he introduced her that way. So, so many yeah. things were wrong there. I will say one thing, though. I was on the DNC Rules Committee this year. Yeah. And we got to decide the process of how to pick our next president. So how this process works, based on which congressional district you're in, a certain number of delegates are allocated to you, like to your district, mm -hmm. right? And these delegates are elected at your state convention. In Texas, our state convention was the first week of June, mm -hmm. right? So my congressional district, TX22, we have four delegates and they have to be gender balanced. So we have two guys, two girls. Those are the only rules. Mm -hmm. And the formula is based on, you know, who voted when and the apportionment, and blah, 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 right? So mm -hmm. it's a rather fair system on how delegates are selected. If people want to be a delegate, go to your state convention in even years and run to be a national delegate. Like, okay. It's just average people who get to go. But like, a... hmm. okay. Like, I I'm not kidding, man. Like, I told my friend David, hey, you should run. Yeah. Because I didn't have enough guys signed up to run. That, and that, he put his good. name on and he got to go to the national convention. Hmm. Okay. That's how people are selected. Like, and then we have a, a list of alternates and whatnot, because you know, some people in like very blue areas, a lot of them will sign up, but then they won't have enough slots because you know it's proportioned. Yeah. But if you can't fill all the slots in every congressional district. That's, That's when true. the extras come in, right? So but if like, I moved to Arkansas, I could probably be like a delegate for the DNC because there's not a lot of blues. Bro, you, I live in freaking Houston. Yeah. All right. I live in a suburb of Houston. Okay. I didn't have enough people. So Same. what's the what's the benefit of the delegate? Like explain it to me like I'm stupid because I kind of am. Okay. So <laughs> explain it to me like Miss Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in elections, there are two sides to it. There's the government yeah. side, who you get to vote for, who's going to, you know, make policy for you. Yeah. Then you can also vote for the party side. Okay. And each side of the party has positions that you can elect mm -hmm. if you're, you know, involved enough and actually care to go to a party meeting. Sure. So at the very local level, you have a precinct chair, right? My precinct is like my 3,000 closest neighbors, and I'm the chair for this. Um, okay. It could be smaller, it could be bigger. There's no really arbitrary rule on how big that is. But a precinct chair is the lowest elected person in a political party. Mm -hmm. All right, then you have your county chairs. Mm -hmm. So the county has a leader for all the precinct chairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Congressional districts have the same thing. So, but for the state. So you have your state party chair, and then you have people elected from every congressional district. Mm hmm. Now, some states do it like by state senate, some states do it by some other legislative districts, but end result, you're being represented in the party by people who are your neighbors. And you can okay. run for these positions at every convention. Okay. The benefit of running for a delegate, it's like the electoral college. You don't mm -hmm. actually vote on the president directly. Mm -hmm. Right. I you know that. vote for the allocation of the electoral college. So in Texas, we have 38 electoral votes, right? Mm-hmm. How we voted and when we, the majority of us, you know, vote for Trump, obviously it's Texas. Sure. So these electors who are also elected at the state convention, uh, these 38 Republicans who were elected at the state convention that the Republicans had here also in June, they now get to go to Washington uh, in January. Mm -hmm. And these 38 people will actually cast their vote and they actually pick the president. Mm, so a delegate will pick the person from the primary right the electors in the electoral college pick the president but you have to pick whoever your county tells you to pick though you can't just change switch it up on a wild card <laughs> there is no rule no <laughs> people will <laughs> string you up no, no no let me let me rephrase there is no rule for it there are consequences for it okay fair fair so, yes, you can have wild cards. You can have faithless electors, and they can vote however they want. Yeah. Um, some states may have tried passing laws uh, to force people to vote based on who the state picked. Sure. Those were deemed unconstitutional. <laughs> right. 
But what will happen is if you say ran as a Republican elector in Texas and mm-hmm. voted for Kamala Harris in January, mm-hmm. the Republican Party will never trust you again with anything. You're going to be banned. Yeah. And you're going to be shunned. So there are consequences to it. Right. But yes, electors really, they can vote however they want, truthfully. But I don't see how that helps a party. Like, I, I get the, the process. It, no, no, it's it an antiquated sense. system. Okay. This system was invented before the internet. Like, this is yeah, yeah. from, like, the 1700s. <laughs> Makes sense. No internet. Yeah. You, you have to do... You can't just you have have go by horseback. And, right. you know, it, it's easier to have 38 people go to a convention than have all do of America a, and all the ballots go to, to D.C. just to do the thing. Yeah, yeah. Right, no, yeah. I, I, I totally get that. That makes sense. Um, no, I totally agree that you should get involved and, and do that stuff. But, like, when you have a party that's not listening to you, um, how does that help? Because so you, delegates you tried to, at, your so, state, yeah. at the state and national convention, you get to decide what the platform should be. You get to vote on it. Mm-hmm. If you don't like something, um, depending on what state you're in, yeah. Like I needed 10% of the delegates present to pull something off the calendar, the yeah. consent calendar, which is going to, mm-hmm. the consent calendar is whatever's on here will pass automatically. But if I want to pull items off of it and debate it, I need 10% of the delegates there to vote to take it off. Mm, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, and if you want to submit policy, like, you know, in Texas, we had the most pro-Palestine platform across the country. Yeah. Right. We got that done because... I had friends, and quite literally, it was only like forty of us, mm-hmm. right? Um, the you rule have 40 is friends. What, what, how do you know, get forty right? friends? Yeah. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so in Texas, the rule is: if ten congressional districts pass a policy or a platform plank or a resolution, right, it's automatically added to the consent calendar for the state convention. Yeah. So I got enough people just to like submit things, yeah. and nobody pulled them off, mm. and it all passed. Mm. That's why Texas has the most pro-Palestine platform in the country. It's because 40 of us did it. I get that. I think that's awesome. And that's commendable. Right. Um, but now but here's how, the thing. The national level. Yes. That's what I want to know. How yeah. do you affect the national level? Well, all these platform things come from the states to the national. And then the national platform and resolutions committee hash it out. Now, I want you to guess how many other states submitted pro-Palestine things for the national platform. Five. You're very close, actually. Well, I know that because you talked about most of them. The number <laughs> seven. Me. Yeah. The number is seven. And then they all seven. based their thing off of yours. Yeah. So seven states did submit it. Yeah. 43 other states submitted things against it. Yikes. So I'm looking at you, New Jersey. Where the fuck were y'all? Uh, listen. New 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 Jersey has a really also New strong, York. <laughs> strong also Delaware uh, affiliation with Israel. Uh, our senators had take more money from APAC than almost any other thing. We're Illinois, not going anywhere. <laughs> California, Maine, Massachusetts, all these blue states, right? Yeah, yeah, all these. Blue states. But here, here's the here's the thing, right? Like, like so, like. We're trying to get to like what happened, how did things break down, right? So like the way you're explaining things, right? Like people don't understand that all they say see is that they're desperate, right? Yeah. And and I like to quote my favorite movie, The Dark Knight, where you know uh, Alfred goes like, you know, in their desperation, they turn to somebody they didn't quite understand. Correct. Yeah. Right. And, and that's not what I... in defense of Kamala Harris. She absolutely bungled her campaign. It was hers to lose. Yeah, they took every step the wrong way, and yeah. I'm not going to sugarcoat that, right? They did not reach out to the voters. They did not reach out to the working class. Like nobody felt relatable to them. In fact, the only groups of people that Kamala did better with were people making above three hundred thousand, college educated people, mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Every other demographic, she had less support than joe biden did yeah that's that's crazy like i thought california's before and after like in joe biden's and kamala harris's and that's california yeah. and it was almost all red and that's mm-hmm. that's that's scary and well, yeah like the like, maps are misleading i hate that they're it's land like most of the land's empty too yeah but right? yeah that's true but like still the numbers also are, are different and like a lot of counties flipped in new jersey Pace county flipped and that's never happened in 40 years yeah um 
I believe California, like the average shift was six percent from mm-hmm. blue to red, mm-hmm. and Jersey was like four percent. Yeah, like it, I'm not trying to sugarcoat this or anything. Uh, the county map I just hate. I wish it would just show population maps and then show the change, and then you really see the picture. Yeah, no, I get that. I get, I, I get that land can't vote. Like I get that. Like that makes yeah. sense to me. Uh, but I do see things that were formerly blue being red and there could be oh, yeah. plenty of reasons like people moving and stuff like that but it is no it wouldn't even be that because no. every single state in the country yeah shifted yeah. red. yeah yeah whether she, it's like 0.5 percent it... or seven percent they all shifted red i think yesterday they just mentioned arizona so she lost all swing states every single yeah, one every single one mm-hmm. and it's it's tough because I feel like the DNC's messaging after they lost is not to look inward. It's to say the country's misogynistic and they're racist, which like there's some truth to that. For there sure. is some truth, but that's not the reason. Yeah. And like if we just if we just focus on that, we're not going to find we're not going to fix anything because. So the DNC chair has resigned. Mm. And. Multiple state party chairs have resigned. Mm -hmm. Multiple county party chairs have resigned. We are going through a reckoning right now. Ah, a reckoning is coming (laughs) in Mm. the words of Bane. (laughs) Yes. Like, you know, in fact, I just watched The Penguin, and there was a line that said, you were so busy filling up. uh, This this line doesn't really spoil it, but there is a line, because I won't tell you who says it, but there's a line in The Penguin. That says you were so busy filling up your plate, you didn't realize your neighbor was starving. Yeah, and that's how I feel about the DNC. Sometimes, mm-hmm. like that's Correct. how I feel. You know. No, I mean, I've had a war against them. I can even tell you, like on the campaigning side, like the DNC did not share data, and so a friend of mine, he does consulting for like mm-hmm. uh, congressional candidates in swing states. Yeah, they did not get data for Wisconsin until one week into the early voting period. That's crazy. That's just how incompetent the DNC is. Yeah. Man. The thing is, I feel like the DNC does have this image of like being incompetent and then being kind of selfish. Whereas the Republicans have this, you know, image of being like evil. <laughs> right. But yes. like, but the thing is, like, when you meet somebody who's Republican and they're your neighbor and stuff like that, and you're like, oh, they're nice, you kind of like, it kind of be like, oh, how could this person be evil? But when you meet somebody who, you know, you, you can't do that when it comes to Democrats because being incompetent is like just things you see coming down from the news. It's not see what you meet your everyday person. Yeah. It's the party. And I'm not sure what's worse. <laughs> like it's yeah. the secret evil guy worse or the secret incompetent guy worse. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. It, it 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 is very interesting. Oh, I have a lot of thoughts on incompetence, man. <laughs> a lot of people need to be fired and never work in politics again. Yeah, man. Um, like I, like this is like Reagan level <laughs> like defeat. Uh, and the yeah. thing is, like, imagine if you like, you know, like the last few elections, he didn't win the popular vote the popular way he vote. did this time he did. now yeah. five by five million votes that's that's wild if every single third party candidate you combine all their votes it still wouldn't scratch the amount of people he won right with. now what's interesting in every swing state though mm-hmm. the democrats won senate <laughs> mm. so this isn't a failure of even like lower Democrats, this is strictly a national failure, like national party failure. Yeah. The only people who can be blamed for this are the DNC and Kamala Harris, and that's it, and her consultants. Mm. Like Michigan, Alyssa Slotkin won hers. Nevada, Jackie Rosen won hers. Like yeah, Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin won again. Like, and Tammy Baldwin's like a uh, a gay woman, like, and she's old. Like, yeah. Like, you cannot tell me that it was just you know, misogyny and whatnot, because women yeah. won everywhere else too. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you can say racism, maybe, but then like, you know, we got, uh, Ilhan Don Omar, Carolina, Rashida Tlaib. And all, and all, right. Yeah. Like women won everywhere and overwhelmingly won everywhere. Yeah, yeah. This is not misogyny or racism. 
at its core this the core is kamala and the dnc did not connect to the average person yeah and the thing is like a lot of people have have, have said this like hey y- you're not saying that you're voting for trump doesn't make you someone who is a racist or misogynist but it means that you're okay with him being a racist and a misogynist and then people are saying to the dnc like oh you're not a genocide supporter but genocide is not a deal breaker for you it's like the same thing it's like same thing it's the same thing like genocide is not a deal breaker for you oh okay bet misogyny and racism is not a deal breaker for you okay yeah bet it's it's the same thing that we've been hearing from one yeah. side now being applied to the DNC. And it's almost like there's th- the same coin. There's two different sides. Yeah. Um, negative campaigning like that does not work on the average person. In fact, yeah. when you try and attribute someone's voting behavior to their core beliefs, yeah, they will shut out and dig d- uh, their heels even deeper. Yeah, yeah. So all these people saying, oh, you know, genocide was not a deal breaker for you. Um, anyone who says that, I guarantee if you're talking to like, you know, your average Dem, they're just going to be like, bet. And they're just still going to vote Democrat, right? Yeah. It yeah. does not change the minds. In fact, just reinforces them to do what they're doing harder. Like, and that's kind of campaign I absolutely hate. Like, we yeah. should not be doing that. We should be focused on the issues that matter to people, which did not happen. <laughs> because again, Kamala's whole campaign was, don't support me. You're a misogynist. Uh, you hate women getting abortions and it's like right so like right. it's messaging not messaging just did not work on it, average th- people like you that threat wasn't enough for me and yeah, it was a threat not. like who who mm-hmm. responds to threats yeah if people threaten me i'm just like come at me you better yeah. not miss <laughs> yeah it's like hey it's not like hey we're, if you vote for us we're going to give you this this and this it's like if you vote if you don't vote for us you're going to get this 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 that's a threat mm-hmm. um, and that doesn't and- work that doesn't work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> like, yeah. like there's people like, I rather watch the world burn than, you know, do that. That's it's a difficult situation. It's hard to imagine how we got here, but when you re-examine it, it seems very clear. And I don't know why the DNC doesn't see it, or they just don't want to admit it. Right? It's like, hey, we can't admit that this is why this happened. I mean, at the end of the day their donors are going to get a tax break. Yeah. That is the, donor, the thing, man. The, the donor class will get their tax breaks. They're going to be fine. Nothing affects them. Yeah. It's yeah. the average person who's going to suffer now. Yeah. Like all yeah. these tariffs that are about to come in, like it's going to drive the price of things up. Musk was on X the other day saying like, yes, this is temporary pain, but it must be done. Like, Yeah. Well, the thing with the tariffs are... I don't think Trump's <laughs> based. I hope he's not stupid enough to do it. Tariffs do not work. Please don't do it. Like I don't think his fan base understands how tariffs. Because I saw a bunch of TikToks with the guys like, yeah, yeah, the tariffs, man. I have a T-shirt company, and like the tariffs are going to help. Like, no, you're going to pay the tariffs. <laughs> like the company, the country is not paying tariffs. You're paying the tariffs. And like, yeah, but it's going to bring jobs here in America. Yeah. So to have a shirt be made here in America is going to cost more than to have a shirt be made in China. Therefore, your customers are going to foot the bill. And it's actually, like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, the tariffs will still be cheaper than producing here in America. <laughs> yeah, global connected economies. <laughs> People are just going to pay the tariffs. It's cheaper than to just do things here. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe the tariffs are going to be used as a way to bluff and get china to ease up on their tariffs because they have tariffs too on us like yes. with like cars and stuff like that so mm-hmm. i don't know we'll see we'll see i don't know where we're going to be but i know that when the next fight comes we need to lace up our boots and f- fight smarter i will give people some hope though if you are a democrat mm-hmm. um your state political party is probably way better equipped to deal with anything than the national party. Hmm. Um, my favorite state parties in the country right now, aside from Texas, of course, are Wisconsin, North Carolina, Arizona, mm, Hawaii. Yeah, like they know what they're doing. Good. Um, in red states specifically, like states, you know, comma lost, mm-hmm. I would actually 
if you if you want to fight back, if you're scared of Trump, in red state specifically, I would donate to your state party and not the national party. Mm. Your state party will better u- utilize those resources. They will get people on the ground, and they will do a much better job of being stewards of your money than what the Harris campaign did. Because you know, they they're in debt now actually after raising a billion dollars. Yeah, which is wild. Because you know, one more TV ad will definitely convince somebody to change their mind and go vote, right? <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, what are your thoughts about Trump talking about term limits for senators? You know, I, I, I was like, I was like, even a broken clock can be right twice a day, right? I was yeah, kinda... I love that idea, actually. <laughs> term limits for every. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Term limits for uh, senators, you know, um, give them like two or three cycles. That's 12 to 18 years, right? That's it. Yeah. You can't yeah. be a senator for more than that. And Congress, is, like, 12 years. You're because out. like when a pack like invest money in somebody they invest enough they have their teeth sunk in you're like stuck with them forever but if you got term limits you can't blackmail people you can't like say hey i raised this much money for you i mean you can but still but it's like you can't have somebody blackmail once and then just hold it over them for like 20 30 40 50 years uh even paying like if like apac is like buying like senators and stuff like that they would have to spend a lot more money because they can't refer to the investments they made before Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know that. I, I really hope Trump gets that done. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think the Congress will allow it to happen because mm. this might be one of the things where the, every congressional rep is against it because both parties benefit from it. Even yeah, uh, even maybe even uh, Bernie Sanders said he's against it, and I was like, Bernie, yeah. you too? Come on, bro. How disappointing, right? Yeah. No, I am for term limits for senators and congressional reps. Absolutely, if Trump can get it done, good for him. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's it's really a frustrating time, and I wanted to have this conversation to have like you know a very like thought out and express everybody's frustration and stuff like that. Like I hate seeing like communities turn on each other, right? And it reminded me of that line from again The Dark Knight, where the Joker goes like, "These civilized people, they're only as good as society allows them to be. Once you know yep. the chips are down, they'll turn on each other and eat each other like dogs." And like that's what I'm seeing, and I'm hoping that's just like a knee knee jerk reaction. We'll see it for a week, and then we'll we'll dust ourselves off and become more unified and try to go again. Um, that's what I'm hoping for, but it's really gross right now. What's happening with communities turning on each other? They're like, oh, you know, like people celebrating Trump winning, and then people going to Starbucks and McDonald's and like celebrating that. Like, it's I don't like that. I don't like seeing that, and I hope the community comes back together. Document it all, man. And if any of these people ever try and say something, cancel them. <laughs> nah, well, that's all I'm gonna say to that. Like, just document it all. Because these aren't allies. These are yeah. like the trend people. And yeah, yeah. It's performative, right? So it's like, oh, you, it's you, know, you know what? Like, do you, like, if anyone said that, oh, I'm going back to Starbucks, I'm like, that just tells me you never stopped. <laughs> you just didn't post Correct. it. Right? Correct. Yeah. You just weren't posting it. You never stopped going. <laughs> so I went to McDonald's I... once, I'll admit. <laughs> Ah, uh, boo. No, I haven't been to Starbucks. I bought an apple is, pie. Here's the thing about Starbucks, man. Like, Starbucks, like, they're a disease on the community. Like, the local shops are, number one, so much better. And they And they oh, support sure. local communities. And they support, you know, like, the way Starbucks treats their unions, they won't even let them have Black Lives Matter pins anymore. So, like, yeah. It's 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 hurting more than just one community, and, and Starbucks wasn't even on BDS to begin with. It was just an organic boycott because of how they treated their union. So it's yes. just one of those things that happened. Oh, we're pro union here for sure. In fact, yeah. the UAW is now still moving forward with the divesting from uh, Israeli bonds and uh, weapons manufacturers. So yeah. shout out to the United Auto Workers Union. Amazing. Yeah, event. I'm awesome, man. Love to hear it. Um, anyways, man. Um. I know this wasn't like our usual fun recap episode. We didn't recap news. We didn't recap like entertainment stuff, but like there's nothing bigger happening this week than this. And I wanted to have a, have a discussion and just give people a little bit of an idea about like what's going on and try to see things from both sides. Cause we do need to come together as a country and be a little bit more unified and it, it it does seem like we're all turning on each other and half the country wants to harm the other half. But Part of me just can't believe that. I feel like we're 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 not that country. 
It's very optimistic. <laughs> I know. I'm the but... belief that I'm a shield and I'm going to start defending everybody. Yeah, well, you know, hopefully that shield's made out of vibranium. <laughs> oh, I'm uncorruptible. <laughs> yeah all right well listen guys thank you everybody for joining us uh don't forget to like share comment subscribe uh drop some comments get involved if we if we said anything yeah uh, and if we said anything that you don't agree with uh hit us up with the comments i would love to get feedback you know i'm just one person and my views are shaped by my experiences and i'm sure you have views that are shaped by your experiences and i just you know want to have open dialogue on the show because like I want the show to be a safe space for just everybody. And I do think after hearing what happened with like Joe Rogan podcast, if I agree, like I think podcasts are becoming coming more important than ever. Like people are getting yeah. a lot of information from these podcasts. Like, you know, like something that someone said uh, for about the Joe Rogan podcast is that you can get on the stage and bullshit for like 15 minutes but you can't bullshit for three hours straight without any teleprompter, without anyone supporting you. It's mm -hmm. just you and the other person. And it's very hard to just be a complete bullshit. And that's as horrible as Trump is, he, he is authentic. Like, he's, he's, yeah. he's, 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 you know. And again, I hope he passes some policies that actually benefit everybody. Like, I genuinely do. I would love to yeah. see the term limits passed. Like, that would yeah. be amazing drain the swamp all that stuff like you know yeah, uh, make it uh not let people that are in congress become lobbyists right after or like work for these companies that, that absolutely needs to be yeah. right out one door come back in as a lobbyist yeah that and pipeline needs to be eliminated for sure at the, least a four-year gap the them. idea that every politician makes like 200k 300k but somehow is a multi-millionaire by the time they're out of congress is a little crazy to me right yeah. like the, the math ain't mathin so i understand why the average person is is frustrated and they see an outsider and they they, they find the cult of personality and they and they connect to that person right even mm -hmm. if that person may not be a good person uh that's just human nature and that's what i've been experiencing and that's what i've been seeing yeah you're not alone man and i see it everywhere yeah. yeah well again guys give us some comments give us some feedback let us know what you think i'm gonna you know try to post these uh clips and we'll see what kind of feedback we get uh until next time don't forget to like share comment subscribe give us good reviews if you give us a good review screen cap it and send it to salam nerds podcast at gmail.com we will give you a free new york comic con exclusive Are you one <laughs> what Am I Are you buying reviews? No, I'm giving out, you know, gifts for people who are participating. I didn't say you have to do good reviews. You just got to give us a review. It should be a raffle. We'll give one out. But I have for like, everybody. No, but I bought, I bought a lot of them. We have enough. <laughs> we'll do one a week then. Okay. Well, we haven't got one entry yet. So let's, let's get some entries <laughs> before we get some rules. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And until next time, guys. Salam, nerds. Peace.